Hey everyone, um, I'm actually going to take a little break from politics this week and even though there's a lot going on, there's the Iowa caucus and the State of the Union tonight, but um, you know, if you want to see my thoughts on those, you can follow me on Twitter uh, or Mines or Gab. Um, what I actually wanted to talk about was uh, an article that was written, uh, I believe yesterday from or two days ago from Rouge V. And if you're not familiar with him, he's a um, really popular um, author, personality. His his sort of claim to fame was that he wrote a, a number, a few books about um, how to pick up women. And in recently, um, he's found, you know, a, a new a new audience and, and a new level of respect because he has come to God and he even unpublished um, the books that he had written before about picking up women. And he recently wrote an article that was fantastic. I'm gonna link to it down below. It was called um, Game is for Fallen Women. And there's nothing in there that I, that I disagree with. Um, you know, this isn't a, um, you know, that sort of response video. And to piggyback on that, um, one of my, my newer favorite channels, Steve Franson, uh, been watching him the past couple months, got turned on to him through the America First movement. He has this really excellent, um, ki kind of longer response to it, um, just kind of echoing Roosh's uh, sen sentiments and providing his own thoughts on it and offering advice on how to um, you know, how to find a virtuous woman and and also advice for men who are, um, I would say, you know, who keep pursuing uh, fallen women. Um, but but what I, and, and I'm going to link to that below as well. So, so I got all that out of the way. What I didn't see from both of these men was a, a response to or for uh, fallen women and so I felt like it was important for me to chime in because I am a formerly fallen woman um, if if you want to learn more about my story I, I went through all of this in a video I made last year called how feminism almost ruined my life and I'll put that in up somewhere over here at the end of this you can check that out so I'm not gonna bog this video down with like my whole backstory. Um, just to give you the really short of it, uh, you know, I grew up um, in a Catholic household. It was very strict. Uh, Steve makes the point that some parents make the mistake of being too strict with their children, with their girls, and it causes them to rebel and, and do everything that the parents wish that they wouldn't. And for me, that was exactly what happened. My parents at first were very strict. They hardly let me leave the house. Uh, you know, I couldn't climb trees. I couldn't, you know, go to just up and go to a friend's house. It, it had to be all planned out. It was a really stifling childhood. And it made me more susceptible to bad behavior when I got older and, and had a little bit more autonomy. Coupled that with uh, my mother is a, a just radical feminist and she uh, divorced my father. Um, she then decided to raise me as a single mother. And she just filled my head with that whole like female empowerment. You don't need no man. You know, men are disposable. You know, all that crap. Um, you know, never compromise. You know, work yourself to death. Uh, you know, staying at home, being a wife and mother is, is not something to aspire to. It's something to look down on. You know, that, that was the indoctrination that was shoved into my head. So it was a recipe for creating a fallen woman and it's exactly what I did. My high school years, my 20s, I was obsessed with sex. I was obsessed with physical gratification, pleasure. My my whole life was just consumed with the pursuit of pleasure and I wasted a good 20 years of my life on it. And so that's really why I wanted to make this video is that, you know, I just, I, 
in the same way that Roosh in his article said, you know, he hopes that he can help men so that they don't waste their life chasing after fallen women, I really hope that through being brutally honest about who I was and who I want to be today, that I can help women who are fallen, who are frustrated and would like to turn their lives around. Um, you know, I don't want young women to waste the the best years of their life on on being a whore. And um, you know, and I say that because I was a whore and and I I was one of those women who I as I said in my past video about feminism, I, I didn't go after men for self-fulfillment, it was completely, like the way I likened it back then, it was like the way a man would approach sex. Um, completely just self-gratification. I I even, you know, if I had met the kind of guy that Roosh V was, I would not have gone home with him. I didn't like men who used game. I didn't like men who tried to pick me up. And in a way that's almost worse because at least those men were on the same level as me and I wouldn't have hurt them when I used them. I, I specifically pursued, you know, good men, men that um, didn't know any better because they were consumed with seeking pleasure the same way I was, but they weren't... Um, you know, manipulators, they weren't, uh, you know, egotistical, not all of them, some of them, you know, but, um, you know, I, I wasted so many years that I could have spent becoming a better person, you know, becoming smarter. I could have stuck with, um, art. I could have stuck with, uh, acting. I could have pursued music. I could have, um, you know, because those were the subjects that I was the best at. I, I've never been good with an analytical stuff or any. Anyway, I'm just saying that I wasted a lot of time on trying to get laid. And I wish that I had had better female role models because all of my role models back then were just like me. You know, they were proud, um, you know, for, for lack of a better word, like me, they were proud sluts. Um, this video is probably going to get me in trouble with YouTube, but, but understand I'm talking about myself. I, I am not talking about anyone else. I'm, I'm directing all of this criticism on me. I was not a good person. I was not a virtuous woman. And the, what turned it around for me was falling in love with a really good man. And when I made my last video, I, we had just gotten married. And there were a lot of people saying that I was, you know, a, a former slut that had latched on to this, this good man who, you know, didn't know any better. And, and actually, um, my husband and I, we're, we were cut from the same cloth. When we met, we were both fallen people. We were both addicted to depravity. Uh, we both were, um, incredibly promiscuous and it it is really by the grace of god that we found each other and then that we found god together um he led me in that direction and i am so grateful to him uh i've said in other videos you know i, I was very anti-god anti-theist um i was to to not get too biblical but i was a fantastic soldier of Satan without actually realizing or acknowledging that's what I was. You know, just all pleasure all the time, sex, drugs, no responsibility. Uh, I, thankfully, I didn't bring children into it. However, the whole point of this video right now is to try to help women come to this earlier than I did because here I am right now and I am past my best childbearing age and I am desperately trying to start a family. And for now, we're having difficulty. Um, and so I, I hope that I can just tell other women that if you are unhappy with who you are, if you're unhappy with the direction your life is, if you feel like you are you know, mired in promiscuity and you want out, get out. You, you can always get out. Every, every new second 
is another second that you can completely change your mind and completely change your life. And for me, it was realizing how empty I was, you know, realizing that this pursuit of pleasure that I'd spent my whole life, uh, you know, obsessed with, that everything I had, it, it meant nothing. And that all I really wanted was to be a good wife and a good mother. And realizing that it's okay to want those things because when I was a feminist, I looked down on women who wanted to do that. And so understanding that the desire to be a wife and mother is, is one of the most like natural, you know, inherent desires that is ingrained in every woman. And what society is doing right now is trying to program you away from that. They, you know, we will, that is a whole other, a whole other video for why, but please ladies, young ladies understand you're being programmed to not want to procreate. You're being programmed to celebrate abortion. You're being programmed to, you know, use men like they're disposable. And so you have to make that honest self, self assessment that you are doing those things so that you can make the decision to stop, you know, and, and I, my, my situation is a little bit different because I was already with the the my life partner and it was already with my husband when we came to all of these realizations you know when we rejected promiscuity when we decided after five years of living together that we were going to go get married so that we could try to start a family and it wouldn't be out of wedlock so um for me uh i came to inner peace through christ and I understand that a lot of feminists right now will hear that and, uh, you know, come, you know, oh, I don't want that. And, and I get it. I, I get it because I was there. I was totally there with you. And I'm, I just want you to understand that you don't have to stay that way forever. You can reject, you know, promiscuity. You can reject drugs. You can reject being a fallen woman. You can become a virtuous woman. You, you have to be brutally honest with yourself about who you are and what you want. And if you realize that living this life of degradation is no longer what you want, there is a, a world of support out there for you. I can tell you as someone who used to be Christian, uh, you know, I thought that Christians were judgmental. I thought that they were, you know, horrible people. And I can tell you that that whole adage of, you know, love the sinner, hate the sin, it is very true. They are not judging you. They are judging your decisions. They're judging your sins. The moment that you seek forgiveness, they are there to forgive you. And, you know, I don't want to paint a completely rosy picture. It's not like I, it was, you know, all sunshine and rainbows when I decided to come back to Christianity. There were still some men and women who were calling me names and you know you have to let that roll off your back those are people who aren't real christians those are people who aren't actually listening to the teachings of christ there were way more people that were incredibly happy for me and supportive and loving and right there to help guide me you know men and women you know, there, I am so, so grateful to the Christian women who reached out both through the comments and videos and, and directly through emailing me to say, you know, I'm, I'm so proud of you. Um, check out this reader reading, check out this section of the Bible, check out this author, check out this speaker, you know, they're, they are right there ready and waiting to help guide you back to a better life. And I can tell you, I, you know, I've said this before, but I, I am the happiest I've ever been since I rejected all, all that sin. And it doesn't mean I'm perfect. It doesn't mean that I have never sinned again, but it means that I don't live in it. I don't live in my sin and I don't um, give up on myself when I sin. You know, I, for me, it was um, my husband turned to God first and I was very resistant. And he asked me to, you know, he asked me point blank, do you believe that Jesus Christ ever existed? 
And even as an atheist, I did. And I think most atheists do recognize that Jesus was an actual historical person. He did live. Uh, there's plenty of accounts from people who interacted with him. So it was, can you, can you research Christ and would that give you the inspiration to come to God? And for me, that Christ was the key for me. Uh, I looked into Jesus. I read his teachings. I read his parables. I read the New Testament uh, a few times. And I really love uh, the book of John and, I'm sorry, the Gospel of John and the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, those are my two favorites that I would, I would recommend to anyone. But finding Christ and finding love for Christ is what brought me to God, brought me back to God. And you can do that. You can do that at any time. And I don't want any of you young ladies to wait until it's too late the way that I may have. I may never be able to actually give birth to a child because I waited so long and I spent so long celebrating sin. So if, if you feel like you wish you could make a change, but you don't know how, ask for help. You're, I'm, I'm right here. You can put it in the comments section and you'll see, I, there are a lot of amazing women that watch this channel that are there to help you. And what I would say, you know, to men is something that Steve Franson had mentioned in his video. And I want to reiterate it. Uh, you know, men don't give up on women. You know, there, there's this whole MGTOW, there's this, there's this whole movement. And when I first made that video about feminism, you know, ruining my life, I had a lot of comments from angry men that were upset with the, the way that I described sex and the way that I was honest about how I used to treat men. And I, I want to say that I understand. I, I understand why you're angry because women right now are just lost. The, the majority of women are lost, but we can't give up on them. Don't give up on our women. You know, we, we, we need them because we would like to continue the species, but also we just, there are so many fallen women out there that don't realize what, what they're doing, that don't understand uh, the way that they're living. And so try and be patient and try and be forgiving and don't celebrate thoughtery. Don't say that you don't like women and then you fall all over yourself for any woman that shows off her breasts. You know, men stick to their convictions and women stick to yours or find them. Find, ladies, find some convictions. Find some self-respect. And if you don't have it, ask yourself why and ask yourself how can you get back there. So that, that, that's just, uh, you know, I, I just watched Steve Franson's video and so all of this is, you know, fresh in my head and it's why I wanted to say something because I, I just don't want men to give up on women and I don't want women to think that because I've lived my life this one way for however many years that I can never change. You, know, you can always change, you can always come back to virtuousness, you can always come back to self-respect. And if you forgive yourself and if you ask a, for me it was Christ, but you ask your higher power for forgiveness, you will find your whole, your whole life can change. So, that was just what I wanted to leave you guys with and and I hope that you all you know had a great weekend and if you're gonna check out the State of the Union tonight uh, I'll be um, tweeting about that uh, later so um, if you like these videos please you know help me out YouTube is crushing this channel um, the usual spiel you know if you could like comment share that would be awesome and I will have links to the, the two things that I referenced down below. And I wish you guys all the best.